today with Nick and we are up north at Marina Del Rey there have been some bluefin popping up within striking distance on the skiff so we are gonna head offshore and troll some of these lures the Mad Max because apparently these big bluefin are falling for these things like crazy so we're gonna head offshore we got that one and then a bigger bigger version of the same one there and uh, yeah, we're going to go troll those around. We did not get any live bait today, just strictly trolling, hoping to get a triple digit bluefin on the skip. So yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully we can uh, get one of those big bluefin and get home early. If not, we'll be out there all day. If you haven't figured it out, if you haven't figured it out yet, ladies and gentlemen, we are on. All right. So we had a lot of line out on that one. Pulling probably at least 200 yards back behind the boat, so we got our work cut out for us. This feels like a really good fish. Yeah, we're northwest of the number you gave me. We did get a, a bite right before that one stuck. It just ripped some drag and popped off, so. Hopefully this one got a good yeah we got two hundred uh, got a good hook in it and we can pull it pretty hard and get this one in the boat. Uh, what are they foamers or breezers? Yeah, I like foamers, kind of breezing foamers. <laughs> the first fish I've ever hooked on this reel, by the way. Ever? <laughs> <laughs> we got one on the troll. We've been fighting it for like 20 minutes now. Yeah, it's probably gonna be a fat one, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, it's impossible to tell right now, but it's gotta be over 80. Yeah. But yeah, so it's we left the dock at like six. Somewhere around there, or 6:30. Okay. But. We just we just got into the fishy zone. Right when we got in the zone, we got a short bit on the troll, and then five minutes later, we hooked this one. So we've we only been in the area for like 25, 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So but yeah. All right. No. Adam has a smaller kill bag, so Whatever, dude. this thing's probably not even gonna fit. <laughs> so if you guys can't see. 
anymore. You just, you know, like, fish for other sh**. <laughs> I guess. Should be home early. <laughs> Is it almost up? Yeah, it's getting close, so I'm, I'll call you back. out nice dude that was so sick we uh got bit once but it just pulled the hooks right after it took a short little run just ripped some drag and pulled the hooks and we just kept going on that line and i remember asking nick i was like should we stop and make sure it wasn't kelp or make sure there's no kelp in there and we're like yeah maybe in a few minutes and then i think just took off we got them bleeding out in the water here i mean it's still pretty early. We can just start yeah, trolling. We can just start tro yeah, yeah, we'll troll for another. I don't oh, know. They're right there. They're right up on the bow. Look at. Yeah, there's still fish jumping around, so we're gonna get this guy in the boat and troll and see if we hook another one. We're down to half a tank of gas, though, so we can't stay out too much longer. I don't want to be stuck out here, but I'm so stoked. That's awesome. My first tuna of the year. Have you got one yet? Uh, a little one. Okay. Little bluefin. Yeah. Big one though. I'm gonna, get my gap, I'm gonna get my gap out. Okay. Oh crap, let's get a break. Oh. Ah. <laughs> that's a hundred. Uh, right it's easy. Oh yeah, that's a hundred. talking about? <laughs> 80 <laughs> miles. Nick, <laughs> <laughs> That's probably like a 110. Woo! <laughs> Woo! This should accomplish it. That's over 100. <laughs> that's well over. <laughs> oh. Oh, f I'm so tired. Thing whooped our oh nice we went free spool right there pulling it over love that love lever drags is my favorite thing <laughs> thank you buddy first fish ever on this accurate reel red white and blue i got the blue braid silver side red red gears on there so sick i can't believe it dude oh i can but it's been i was telling nick on the way out here I've been snake bitten this year as far as the pelagic go. I've had a great sea bass year, great halibut year, but I have not been able to find any like tuna willing to play. So it's awesome to finally come out here and get one, especially one on your own boat with your boy. Yep. <laughs> That's sick. Don't need to hold it out for this. <laughs> Come on, Nick, hook one. Hook one of these little ones. Be a nice addition to our collection. Ah. 
crazy, man. We had it all to ourselves. <laughs> and we can't help them. If we were to lob a mackerel out there, probably. Ah, fire! There we go. There we go, baby. Dick's on. Hit it. Under the other fish. Yeah. Nick's on. Here we go. Get to tie on a little tiny, little tiny jig there. These look like smaller fish, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just don't thumb it, just don't thumb it. I'm not. He's only like three feet down. There are like two more passes in there. I'm barely thumbing. I'm literally just barely thumbing it, dude. I'm not holding it. Like I'm still letting it slip when it needs to. Alright, let's go out. Right here. That was a mean fish, man. I'm gonna bleed him out up there. Holy crap. Woo! Two on deck. That's two, baby. That's 50. Yeah, that's a, dude, that's a mean 50 pounder on that little, that little jig there on what's, was that 60 pound floro to 50 pound braid? Yeah. Oh, that's scary. Where's that knife at? Number two. So we got the fish packed away in the kill bag. Obviously that one's a little, a little too big to fit in my little kill bag there, but they're all covered in ice, but we got no more room. So even though there's still fish biting, we could sit out here and troll. I think we're good. We're not gonna be greedy. We're gonna head back, clean these fish, make sure they got plenty of ice on them and take care of them. Woo, we made it. We're back. And it smells like bird tuna has been sitting in the kill bag on ice uh, since yesterday so about 24 hours maybe a little more so it's nice and cold we had ice packed in the cavity here um, and I added, added some of these like little freezer packs in there in the bottom to make sure that that salt brine or that liquid in the bottom stayed really cold too so this tuna should be in great condition uh, it is pretty hot out here and I stupidly bought a black table so I've been putting water on it to make sure that uh, it doesn't get warm under the fish but pretty warm out here today so I'm gonna cut through this as, as quick as I can and get it all cleaned up. big cut right down the spine it kind of angled the knife just a little bit there that's all right I just kind of separated it right here from the spine and then traced it all the way down underneath here real slowly and that whole loin popped right off just like a little puzzle piece there so I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom and the other side as quick as I can so I can get this covered on paper towels and back on uh, back on ice or in the fridge so yeah back in the kitchen um, I'm going to make two of my favorite things that I love to make with bluefin, and that's gonna be 
bluefin pokey, and then I'm gonna do seared bluefin. So I've already chopped up our jalapeno, we have onion, cucumber, and then I'm gonna do the avocado last because this is all gonna go in the fridge here um, while I cut the fish to keep everything cold. I do have the mixing bowl in the fridge already. I think that's really important. You want the bowl to be cold, so that way when you put the ingredients, especially the tuna in there, it's not warm or hot, um, and it doesn't affect the, the texture of the tuna because that's, that's a huge part of, of the dish for sure. So yeah, I'm gonna mix all that together and then I will add, we're gonna do sriracha, a little bit of rice vinegar, obviously soy sauce, sesame oil, and then a little bit of garlic, salt, and sesame seed into the pokey. Obviously add that to however you like it. I think that is, again, one of the most important parts of making pokey is making sure you're not drowning it. You don't want your fish to be swimming in all of that stuff. Um, my motto, I guess, is you can always add more. You can't take it out. So I start with a little bit of each, taste it, um, and then you can add it to taste afterwards. And then obviously as the person making it, you just get free food or more food as you taste it as you go. So it's kind of a win-win, but yeah. So that's what I'm gonna put in the pokey. And then we have the, the black pepper here for the uh, seared bluefin. I'm gonna do black pepper, a uh, little garlic salt, and then sesame, um, sesame seeds on there. And then I'm gonna do sesame oil first. We're gonna put that on a hot pan for maybe 15, 20 seconds a side just enough to get that little crust on the outside. You don't want it to cook through. You don't want that, that tuna to turn white. You want it to be rare, rare, very rare in, in the middle. So that's the plan tonight. The rice just finished cooking. The first thing I did is put it in a bigger room temperature, I guess pan or mixing bowl or whatever you have that's a little bit bigger, like a wok, anything like that works. They do make those wooden, uh, I don't know exactly what they call, but they're made out of wood and they're big and round and flat and you can mix or spread the rice evenly. That way it cools. You don't want your sushi rice to be scalding hot, obviously. So just gently mixing it here, just trying to get it to cool down. And then I do have this rice vinegar powder. I don't know the brand name, but if you just type in rice vinegar powder on line, you can order it online or a lot of Asian markets do carry this stuff here. And uh, just pop that open. I prefer using this than uh, to actually using the uh, rice vinegar in the rice because I'm not good enough to do the portions correctly or cook the rice a certain way because it gets really, I hate having soggy rice. So if you put too much rice vinegar in there, it does get, it gets really soggy really easily. So I love this stuff. It's a lot easier for me to use or just, I guess, your, your average, <laughs> average person making uh, sushi rice. But it definitely, it, you can definitely taste the difference. So I'm just add a little bit of that again. Just start with a little bit there, mix it in nice and gently. You don't want to break the kernels or anything like that. You're not trying to smash the rice. Just trying to mix it in evenly. Wait, what, what'd you put on? My stretchy pants. <laughs> She's been starving herself all day for this. All right. So we have a tuna steak here. And again, it's been five days since I've caught this fish and I've been wrapping them in paper towels every single day. So I'm gonna show you guys how I like to cut this tuna steak right here into a section that I'm gonna use to make pokey and then another section that I'm going to sear. So I am not a sushi expert by any means, you guys. Don't know what these cuts are called, but from what I've seen and learned is you do a cut right across the top there. This right here is what I use for the pokey. So we cut that into little cubes. And this part here, you can kind of trim it up and then obviously you have just like that perfect steak that you can sear. So that's what we're gonna use to sear right there. So I spared you guys the boringness of chopping this into cubes, but that's what I did. Chopped it into little bite-sized cubes. Doesn't need to be anything special. Uh, we have the ingredients here, the onion, cucumber, and jalapeno. We're gonna put it all in this bigger mixing bowl. Again, these bowls were sitting in the fridge, so they're nice and cool. I don't recommend putting the tuna in a warm bowl but yeah so i'm gonna put the tuna in here first and then add the ingredients because i didn't measure anything i never do but you can always add more so we'll just throw this in here and then mix it up let's see how it looks again add to your guys's taste i never measure anything i probably should but i don't 
but mix that in. That looks pretty good. This is the important part. You want to be very, very careful with the sauces. Like I said earlier, you don't want to add too much. You don't want it swimming in there. So I'm going to start with a little sesame oil first. Little sesame oil, little rice vinegar, very light on the rice vinegar. It's very easy to overdo it with this stuff. It does come out pretty quick too. So just a little bit of that. Now we're gonna hit it with soy sauce. And then a little garlic salt. You can use regular salt too. It doesn't have to be garlic salt. I just honestly only own garlic salt. <laughs> Perfect. Little sesame seed. A lot of sesame seed. And then just a touch of sriracha. I'm only going to put a little sriracha just in case people don't like spicy. They can always add a little more sriracha. That is not rocket science. Really easy to do. And then and mix it in there. Mm. Yep, so that's good. So what I'm going to do with this, just put it right back in the fridge. Make sure that stays cool. I will add avocado in a little bit. Add that last, but I'm going to go to work on the seared bluefin next. All right, so all I put on here was that garlic salt, pepper, and some sesame seeds on all four sides. And then uh, before I did that, I put some sesame oil on there just so it would stick. And what we're gonna do is just throw that on a like medium high heat with some sesame oil, sesame oil in a pan right behind us. And like I said, 15, 20 seconds aside, flip it, boom, boom, boom. Be done with each one. We'll do one at a time. We got the camp chef over here heating this up. I do like doing this outside when possible, just in case it does get a little smoky. Anytime you sear some, some stuff on some higher heat, it can get a little, little not smelly, but can get smoky. Especially with sesame oil, it does not like being super hot, so be very, very careful. Um, pay attention to it, because it does smoke a lot sooner than regular oil. So that looks pretty good right there. We're gonna throw one on, see how it goes. That's what you want to hear. Just got done searing these outside. Again, 15, 20 seconds per side on that medium high heat. And that's what you want to see. You can see a nice even uh, cooking, I guess, layer around the outside. And when you cut into that, it should look pretty darn good. Gosh. I hope the lighting is good enough in here for you guys to see that, but that looks absolutely fantastic. So there we go. We got our seared bluefin right there. Turned out pretty good. And we got our pokey on top of that rice. And yeah, pretty simple. Didn't take too long to prepare. We got everyone else's over here ready to go. Some soy sauce and wasabi. And then also eel sauce. If you guys like something sweet, I highly recommend this eel sauce right here. It's really, really delicious. Really easy to overdo though, so be careful with that. But you can add that on the side and dip it in there or just sprinkle it on top, but we're going to dig into this and we'll get a reaction from everybody shortly. All right, initial impressions. Nick? That was terrible, as you can guess, see. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. Thanks for cooking. Probably one of the better chefs that I know. <laughs> for sure. I am not a chef. I just <laughs> pretend to be one on TV. Well, it's good enough for me because my plate's clean. Right on. I wish you prepped more. Thank you. When was, when was the... Okay. Oh, when, sorry. I didn't know you were done. Go ahead. Bring yeah, it back. When was the last time you had bluefin? Besides when we made it. Oh, I was gonna say <laughs> before five that, before days that. ago, uh, when I caught a tuna last year. It was a bluefin? Yeah. Nice. But I don't know what I'm doing. I just went on YouTube. I was like, how do I make a poke bowl? Mm -hmm. And that was it. And it sucked. No, That's... the tuna was good, but it's not like what you make. It's not even close. And then you sear it like that. Yeah, it's nuts. We gotta start somewhere. It's definitely like a fine tuned thing. I'm still working on yeah. mine over there, but nice. Matt? I would, I would definitely say that's restaurant grade in my book. Thank you, sir. Um, this was incredible. Absolutely oh, delicious. Oh, yeah, look at that. Get close up right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Really glad you put your you hat go. on for that. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, well, that's a nice hat. What brand is that? Anyways, so yeah, like I said earlier, you guys, we did make bluefin and uh, like sashimi and nigiri and hand rolls a few days ago. I should have filmed that, to be honest with you, but we were just all super excited to yeah. jump into that. But like, like I, I posted that picture earlier, so yeah, you guys can see it there. So this is our second time eating it. Matt's <laughs> scarfing it down. Chandler? I'm glad I wore my stretchy pants. <laughs> it's <was> delicious. <laughs> The stretchy pants, yeah. I mean, I actually wore mine too. <laughs> See? Yeah. I got my gym shorts. Did you shorts. wear yours? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody was prepared. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to make room for that. But yeah. yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Um, and stay tuned for, for more content like this. The fishing has just been absolutely insane. It's been getting better and better. So I'm looking forward to getting the boat out really soon. The weather is up the next like three to four days. But next week, I'm hoping to get back out there offshore. There's a ton of bluefin, yellowfin are starting to move up. We got kelp patty, yellowtail, and dorado. A lot of exciting stuff coming your guys' way. So subscribe to you, stay tuned. Hopefully you're well enough soon. If I pull out on tune right now, I would die. He had hernia surgery, so he's struggle bus right here, but we'll get Matt out there. Get him to one pull day. on a, one day. <laughs> when the stars align. I can go, I'll just pass the rod. There you go. Unfortunately. Oh my God, I got one. Okay, here, here, here. <laughs> so yeah, we don't want him to have to go back and <laughs> deal with that again. But yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.